And there we go. Let's see my hair is just right, even though I just washed my hands. It doesn't matter which side it's going on to. But anyway, here I am as I sort of promised my live stream normally, which is on a Friday, pushed back to today, Saturday, because, well, for those that didn't catch my uh, social media posts and, uh, which was it, uh, my uh, video game stream on Friday, basically I was dead tired after Thanksgiving on Thursday, which uh, involved me going on an 11-mile bike ride just because I wanted to get some exercise in, then cooking Thanksgiving for one, just basically smoking some uh, chicken wings and making some stuffing as well, but a very active day Thursday, and then finished up with a few beverages, and then by Friday I was just dead tired. I just I had so much. I just like I don't really want to do the live stream, so I just settled for some video games. And well, but here I am today, a day late, but hopefully not a dollar short. So let's see if we can get the chat going here. Switch from OBS to what's the get that to one side, and then get the chat to the other side so here we go and yes Judy I did wash those um pots and pans well this is for some unrelated this is the inner pot for my uh, where is it uh, it's over there off camera my instant pot which is why I make some other stuff in I've been meaning to use this more often on the channel but I haven't really found anything good to use it for so if you got any ideas just uh, leave a comment somewhere Nearly destroyed my tap doing that. But on the show today, this is another nod to um, Bob the Raptor and Joe. So let's see where we get that. Not a dollar short. Paper rectangles roar. Okay. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Bob, this is more for one of them Joe's ideas. He had suggested, like, was it a couple of live streams ago about making a kind of a meat cake, if you will? Well, I'm actually going to do just that. And I'm going to make it out of something that I didn't think of at the time, but. I'm kicking myself for not, but here it is. It's very, very simple. Meatloaf. Now, there's plenty of recipes online out there for how to make a um, meat cake or a carnivore cake doing, using the exact same thing, just taking a meatloaf and putting it in a nice cake kind of shape and then putting mashed potatoes on its frosting. That is exactly what I'm going to do today. And maybe let's see if I can get the last bit for sprinkles. I think... Cause, so what I'm going to do again, while I'm looking for some stuff again, is basically to make a meatloaf. I'm going to do something a little bit different though, because normal meatloaf requires cooking it in an oven for an hour. I don't have that kind of time, so I'm going to employ this thing. If you can't see it on screen, you can barely see it on the left edge. My, um, you know, I'll just unplug it. This guy, my uh, air fryer, which will cut the cooking time of the meatloaf in half to maybe about 25 minutes, so that will be plenty of time for us to just chat or whatever, maybe have some drinks and maybe show you a few other things, just, I don't know, whatever comes to mind, whatever comes to your mind as well, so here's where I'm going to cook my meatloaf. <clears throat> if I can put this without destroying any cords. Alright, and I'm going to cheat on the mashed potatoes by just doing some instant stuff. Um, I was going to use this for a Thanksgiving, but I decided uh, this would be overkill, so I'm saving it for today. So let's see what else we got going on in the chat room here. I wish I could have had this for my hatch day right away. Well, that's Joe talking, obviously. So, well, once, one of these days, Joe, one of these days. So now what was I going to look for? Oh, something which came in the mail. It was either yesterday or today. Something I ordered for Amazon just for this occasion this stuff which i don't know if you can see it's a piping bag along with other piping tips to make good those flowery kind of things i've actually never used this before so i'm going to learn as i go and well maybe make a fool out of myself maybe make a fool out of the meat cake but either way it should still taste really really good put that here because i won't need it till the end and finally to top it off at least if all goes well you need some sprinkles and sort of either cake. Most cakes have either sprinkles or uh, chocolate chips. This carnivore cake, this meat cake, bacon bits. Does anything else need to really be said about that? Alrighty, let's see. So let's see. 
All right, before we get started here, as is I do on every live stream, there's gonna be beverages involved. So I will give you the choice of what I start to drink with. I've got three choices as always, not always, always, but I've got three choices for you this month, but really there's only one. Let's start first. Some leftover Miller Lite. Second, another favorite that uh, you've seen before. My favorite drink in the whole wide world, um, Ace Pineapple Hard Cider, which is basically a blend of apple juice and pineapple juice and fermented to absolute perfection. I literally can't get enough of this stuff. And lastly, you might like this one. From the Boulevard Brewing Company in Kansas City, Missouri, their Bourbon Barrel Quad, a barrel-aged beer, barrel-aged ale, which maps in, which weighs in, and oh, take a look at this. Take a look at the ABVs on that, Joe. 12.2%, 26 IBUs, not very bitter. Or medium minimum bitterness, which will be offset even more by the maltiness and well, probably the high alcohol content. So, I don't know who all is in the chat. I see Judy and I see Bob here. Alright, so, so Bob is um, stepping aside and Joe's taking over. Alright, that's good to see. And Judy, it sounds like a good drink, the pineapple stuff. So anyway, i try to see who I got. I think it's just... Bob and Judy for the moment. So, you don't, so Judy, you don't like malt anything. Well, that's kind of what makes the alcohol, it's the alcohol going in a beer. So, um, malted with malted grains and such. But anyway, let's see, this has this obviously does have some malt in it, but it's almost all completely fermented, and you can't really taste much of anything anyway. But anyway, I'm not going to go into a beer. Um, Lesson right now, I got some uh, meatloaf to cook. So, my question out to you is which one should I start out with? The Miller Lite, the Pineapple Cider, or the Bourbon Barrel Quad? I'll give a few minutes of while, while I'm waiting, I'll get some more stuff ingredients. The pound of beef I'm going to be using to make the meatloaf. While I look over the recipe for what I'm going to be making and I'm not going to make a secret of it I'm just borrowing the recipe online from uh, allrecipes.com let's just see here 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 actually you know what let me switch to split screen mode here so you can see what I'm looking at here split screen activate so there you go on the right you see me and on the left this is my surface which I'm going to be working on predominantly Maybe one of these days, if I get enough cord and get enough stuff or whatever, I'll put a second camera up on uh, this area right here, but I just have no clue how I'm going to pull that off. I need a really long USB cable, excuse me, USB cable to plug into the laptop over here, which you can't see, obviously. And I killed the chat. So we got Uncle Chuckles coming back in here. Dayton Flyers, go Dayton Flyers. Oh, Mr. Ham is here too. We got a bunch more people here. So, so I'm now, I'm assuming Judy's vote is the, I don't know what it is. So Bob's voting for the bourbon barrel prey or for the bourbon barrel ale. Again, for those that just joined in, I'm offering to start with, while I get the ingredients ready, the choice of what I should start uh, drinking before I start, uh, while I start cooking, which is either a Miller Lite Ace Pineapple Hard Cider, which is one of my favorites, at 5% alcohol, or from the uh, Bourbon Barrel Quad, a Bourbon Barrel Ale from the, um, what is it, the Boulevard Brewing Company out of Kansas City, weighing in at 12.2%. So let me, before I do that, let me check other ingredients while you all get your votes. Nope, I need an egg. Slightly bitten. So I'm probably going to get a bowl. Get a bowl 
to whisk it in. And a whisk to whisk it whisk, or whisk. That's my bad attempt at humor. So anyway, so it's Joe, and you have to pick the bourbon barrel. Well, two votes, and you know what? I'm curious about the bourbon barrel beer, so let's let's start with that. I'm curious about this one myself. <clears throat> so here we are. The bourbon barrel quad. Oh my god, that smell. Oh, that smell. Good amount of malt. Decent amount of maltiness, but I can get I smell the um, the alcohol bits in it. The it's not the bourbon alcohol, it's just the pure alcohol from the beer at 12%. And I get some of the bourbon and the uh, barrel notes in it as well, so. Anyway, cheers. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. Good, good, good stuff. So, anyway, let's begin. I've got quite a lot of stuff here. I'm going to try to do all the mixing in here. Yeah, this is a little bit on the orange side because I also toss... Um, Chicken tenders and hot sauces, that's why this is kind of discolored. One of these days I'm going to get a, a stainless steel uh, mixing bowl to do stuff in, so one of these days. So anyway, where should I get started? I think I'll crack open the egg, get the messy stuff out of the way. in this little bowl here. They say lightly beaten, so I'm gonna probably overdo it. And for those just tuning in, I'm basically making a uh, meat cake suggested by um, Joe the Raptor about a couple weeks ago in one of his live streams. So I'm basically making a meatloaf that's gonna go into this pot here, this pot here, this pot here. It looks sort of like a small cake and then ice it with these fake mashed potatoes here which I'm going to cook in this pot. Probably at the end of, actually maybe while this is cooking so. And I'm also going to use a fancy fancy um, cake piping bag and stuff to get some flowery stuff around it so looks kind of like this. Ooh, these little these little groovy things. We might be able to have some fun with that. I forgot about those. Sip a broom barrel. Ah. Curious as to what he's putting in the meat cake. Kentucky bourbon barrels. Well, Kentucky bourbon barrel. That's from uh, Alltech in uh, Kentucky. I've had that before, but this stuff. Is from uh, again, uh, again Boulevard Brewing in Kansas City. Did anyone see on the news that the bridge from Cincinnati is to Kentucky shut down for an accident? I remember seeing something about that a while back. That's that's crazy. Isn't that isn't that like one of the biggest, if not the biggest, bridge from Cincinnati to uh, Northern Kentucky? I think it is. But anyway. Next bit, I think part of it involves an onion, which I have here, a small yellow onion. Let me see if I can... I'm going to start crying a little bit. Plenty of dried bits here, and how about where I didn't think this through. Hold up a sec. Go. 
garbage bits for the onion. Put that off to the side. We'll put the papery bits in there as well. Did I destroy a... Did I hit something on my head? I thought I hit the camera with my head, but I did, but not bad enough. Anyway. Then I'll do that. Get another layer off of this. Is there anything else? I'll just take one more layer off of this. So I'm going to dice this, but I'm going to cheat and use my little mandolin slicer here. I don't trust my knifing skills enough to dice this, at least not yet. That'll do, I think. Why not? The best Spencer Bridge is closed. I'm still closed today. Correction doesn't like chuckle. Although there's still auto corrects up here. Too far away from that bridge to clear. Well, I haven't needed to go to Kentucky in uh, forever. But anyway. Let's start slicing up some, uh, let me get this up front and center, if I don't chop off my thumbs first. Get that out of there, so I definitely don't chop anything off. That's, here we go. I reckon that should be enough. So you can break apart some of these last bits here manually. Actually, this bit. Yeah, it's sticking too much. Toss that, but the rest of this should be fine. This onion bit should be good. Anything else I need to prepare? This says for a tablespoon of chopped fresh thyme, I don't have that, so I'm just going to use a teaspoon of this dried thyme here. Dried thyme. Thyme. Salt, ground black pepper. So that's pretty much all it's going to go in. It's going to be very, very simple here. So now, let's... Let me clear some space up here. I don't need this bit for now. Or this. Okay, let me get some gloves here so I'll work with this uh, with my hands. This is 
three tablespoons of dry breadcrumbs, and I knew I was missing uh, something. Is this? Uh, yeah. I do have some uh, panko here. Panko. I can't remember which way is which. And yes, I know this is seasoned, so it'll so probably add some flavor, weird flavor to the uh, meatloaf. But I think it'll be okay. This thing says seasoned with Pecorino Romano cheese. So a little bit of a cheesy flavor to it, but yeah, probably nothing insane. This will be offset by other flavors. Got the onion in there, the onion in there. Oh, oh. I shouldn't have thrown these away because I need a teaspoon. If I can find a teaspoon of the, uh, here's the teaspoon of my thyme. I reckon that'll do. And while this is still out of the salt, I think I put my gloves on too soon. And some pepper. Where's the grinder? Where is that grinder? Here's the grinder. Grinder, grinder, grinder. Fresh ground black pepper. Cause you gotta have this. That's good, I think. And I don't think I need any more. Just to use the mines to mix it all up. I wonder though if I didn't chop up the onions finely enough. I can see y'all talking about the bridge that's been destroyed in Cincinnati. I mean, the only thing is that's, I think the bridge I use, sometimes I go to Tennessee every now and then for um, Gatlinburg, Tennessee for vacationing. I'm assuming that's one of the big bridges I take to get there. So that might screw things up on that end. But I did not go this year and I have no plans to. I would call that mixed pretty well. Let's take these gloves off. Did I miss anything on the recipe? No, I didn't. Cleveland. If you're gonna, if you're going to put in any peppers, you gonna put any peppers in that? The recipe didn't call for any hot peppers, but. It's not too late. I don't have any fresh ones, but I've got plenty of powders. I'm gonna leave it up to a vote. I'll let you guys talk about it. Should I add some hot pepper powder to that? I've got plenty of choices. I gotta get jalapeno, cayenne, paprika, including pepper for powders for, and flakes for habanero, ghost pepper, and reaper. So I'm not gonna, I don't want, I really don't wanna do any super hot stuff on this, so. But maybe, maybe, you know, maybe some cayenne in there might add a nice heat element to this. Should I put some cayenne in this? Or some just a red, and or some red pepper flakes? I'll leave it up to you. Meanwhile. What do y'all think? Ghost pepper, I don't want that. I really, I'm really, I'm not going to do a ghost pepper. I really don't want to. 
but I think I think uh, cayenne might just add just enough uh, just enough heat to make it a little interesting. Mm. Well, you know what? I think I'm going to compromise. Let's see, slightly. They can just maybe regular regular red pepper flakes might be. You know what? Just let me think. Choices, decisions, decisions, decisions. Facebook back in the seventies, they had a they had a snow for a month blizzard. Cayenne wood, and it's good. So let's just see, red. How about maybe a half a teaspoon of cayenne powder? That is what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to mix it up all over again, but that's okay. You know what? Just for flavor and color, let's add some uh, of that stuff. Add some paprika as well. That'll be good. In the meanwhile, I think this thing set to preheat this to 400, so it sounds like a good time to do just that. Preheat that to 400. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna do a couple of things first. The pan, cake pan. Line it with aluminum foil so I can take it out easier. Get the handle out so I can work with it a little easier. from the uh, beef bowl be enough of a lube for this stuff so mm. yeah I know there's a little crack here but you know that's okay let me see, 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 see. That makes sense. I throw it on my eggs to help fight inflammation. Mm -hmm. Spice is good. Though Joe might disagree, Bob would agree, and then it appears you agree too, so that's good. So now, I've got one extra glove, so let's mix in the cayenne and the paprika. mixed up well enough. So now in our meatloaf and potentia goes into this cake pan of a well it is a cake pan actually. It is a cake pan designed specifically for the air fryer. But I don't think I've actually ever used it for real cakes. This might count, but I don't know if it will, but... Mm. 
Now the original recipe calls to spray this with uh, some olive oil, brush it with some olive oil, but I don't know about that. What do you think? Oh, Christopher Herbs is here. Hey Chris, how you doing? So what have we got here? And Ken, you're just joining us. Uh, I am making in honor of um, Joe the Raptor here. He wanted a, he had mentioned in one of his live streams that he wanted a meat cake for his uh, birthday, so I am making one for him in the form of a meatloaf with some mashed potato icing. And I just finished making the meatloaf bit here. Just added a little bit of uh, paprika and cayenne pepper to give it a little bit of a kick to it. Right now I'm letting the air fryer, uh, oh, not overheat, but I hope it doesn't overheat. Letting the air fryer uh, preheat right now so I can cut the uh, cooking time for the meatloaf in half. To about maybe 25 minutes so there'll be plenty of time in the meantime teensy bit of cleanup is there anything else I need to throw away over here over here and now I don't think so put that off camera so what have we got here anything new Brent oh. Spence bridge me close for a month that's not gonna be good. Nope, I've got a little spray gimmick here with some olive oil in it. Let's do that here. That ought to do, I think. Let me get something else here just to have it ready. Where is. Gotta have ketchup with the uh, meatloaf, so I'll just leave it in the fridge for now. That'll go on a little bit later. So what this is, is olive oil is good, absolutely. Time to give me some, oh, Joe's gonna get some Great Lakes Christmas sale. Ooh, that's good stuff. You had that during the uh, members only session, if I remember. That's, and Bob had a little, well, too much, shall we say. All right, this is at 25 minutes, so now, let's get, uh, oh, that was, I mean, wasn't good. Let me just, here we are. Into the basket it, uh, into the basket it goes. Let's leave this open a little bit so I can yank it out afterwards. Actually, not a little bit less. All right, 25 minutes and we are away. I'm gonna wait until almost the last minute to do these uh, roasted garlic mashed potatoes because that's these will not take very long at all or or should I do them now and let them cool so it'll be easier to work with when I'm icing this cake in any case I'm just going to clear this uh, surface off for a minute so bear with me while I do some extremely boring dishwashing Because this is a very real, real part of cooking dishes, cleaning the dishes. I mean, it's part of the reason why this live stream was on a Saturday and not Friday, because this place was so messy, I <sighs> was just so tired and didn't want to do anything on Friday, so. All right. Kind of small. Will it really take that long to cook? Well, maybe I should check it every 10 minutes or so. I've got, where's my thermometer? I have it somewhere. But anyway, the recipe I looked at said 25 minutes for a one pound uh, meatloaf. My thinking, now that you mention it, I knew I was missing something. Was it just to check the internal temperature and around, if it's around 160 degrees, then it should be good. Hold on a sec. Should I do this? Yeah, it might be overkill. Where did I put my... Of course, the one time when I think to need a thermometer, I can't find it. 
Story of my cooking life. Where be it? Not in there, not in there. Aha! Here we go. So let's take a look in here. There's a ghost in the background. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, oh wait. Maybe it's the reflection of the uh, umbrella lights that I've got in the background here, so that could be it. Aha, uh -huh, yep, I see it, I see it. Let's see if you can see it from here. Uh, uh, or oh, no, that's not it, or is it? Maybe I'm thinking something else. Am I going nuts? Or maybe there is a ghost. Now this is the time where Bob can show up with his Ghostbuster stuff. And lo and behold, Bob's taking over this chat again with a proton pack, so I don't have that. So anyway, maybe in about uh, 15 minutes I'll check the temperature of that, and if it's at 160, internally I'll yank it out. If not, I'll just check it every now and then. Sound like a good idea to you? So anyway, let me just switch to uh, full screen. So there's nothing here interesting, worth cooking at all, or doing it all, so. Get back to this, back to that. What do we <coughs> so here, top part of my, ay, 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 my mandolin slice is getting water everywhere. But it could be worse, other stuff could get everywhere. Shells, throw them away. Anything more in the chair? Yeah, make sure it's done. Don't want to be sick. Mr. Ham says it's the ghost of old man Jenkins. Wait, flat is gonna ghost. Oh, oh, that's just my. Wait, why are these still out? Put these back in the fridge. Speaking of, oh god, I mentioned the gulp that stuff, that's oh god, it's good. In case you're just tuning in, I'm making a meatloaf uh, cake for, um, as suggested by um, Joe, the raptor from Bob and Joe. The beer I'm drinking right now from, uh, I don't know, Chris, if you know this, it's the um, Boulevard Brewing Company in Kansas City, Missouri. This is their Bourbon Barrel Quad, weighing in at 12.2% ABV and 26 IBUs. It is very smooth and very, very nice. Do some more washing with the dishes. That part out. Question. I don't know if this has happened to any of you, but sometimes I can just get a, accumulate a lot of junk in my um, sink, and sometimes it just falls down the uh, the drain. It's a pain in the ass to pull it back out. Because of that, I got one of these little what is it? To deal with that every now I got one of these little strainer um, do that things that go right over the uh, sink cover. Nothing falls down. That's happened a couple times where I've dropped my um, old uh, teaspoon, tablespoon measure down there. It's kind of hard to get out. I'm, I'm looking for it. And then I hit the, uh, was it the, uh, food process, the garbage processor, and then I hear them chink, 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 chink. And I'm like, oh, God, that's where I left them. Worst thing that happened was, I'm trying to remember what I left in there. 
was it a shot glass? It was some sort of glass thing that I left in there on accident, and that was the worst. One thing I, I think also, I think it was a shot glass that it was hard to like pull out, yank out. I had to get like tweezers, or it was it was painful. So I got this thing to deal with that. But anyway. Back to the washing of the big mixing bowl. smelling the meat from the uh, air fryer. Let's get a waft of that. That's nice. Smelling good so far. Barnum, do you ever make wings in that air fryer? And are they good cooked in it? <laughs> it's all when the garbage disposal bursts it floods the kitchen now. Let's see. Bob and I can eat raw playing all cans. Let's just see. Catching up on the chat here. Bob and I can eat raw prey, y'all can. Oh, I'm jealous of that, Mr. Ham. Again, that's going back to the wings in the air fryer. I can't remember. I think I've cooked wings in that air fryer a couple times. I've had mixed results. But, um... I really don't make wings that much any, anymore. But actually, I, I tell a lie. The last few times I did, I tried out a recipe for um, Nashville hot chicken wings from... Um, a big, 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 big time YouTuber, you've probably heard of him, uh, Sam the Cooking Guy. I've used that recipe quite a few times and it is amazing. Insane, it's really, really good. But the times I did that, I actually used, well, I'm not gonna pull it out, my wok down there as a sort of impromptu deep fryer, cooking it right here on the stove. So I don't really do my wings in my air fryer a whole lot much anymore. Mainly, I think one of the big reasons is because it's just, I think it's too small. The last few times when I try to do wings here, I have a little stacky thing. It's a little platform, like a wire kind of thing that's off camera. I don't feel like getting it, but that's the only real way I can fit like maybe eight, 16 or so wings or 12 wings in this little thing. That's the only regret I have about this air fryer is that I think it's too small for what I want to use it for. If I had to do it over again, I would have gotten the um, bigger size of this. But I find it's really, really good for me. For um, Recently for dinner, I've been doing a whole lot of... Um, it's in here. This isn't the real thing, but just, just frozen uh, crispy strips, um, just frozen chicken tenders. These things, the air fryer cooks these things perfectly. It doesn't take forever like you would in an oven. And yet it, it's... A little slower than the microwave, but with the microwave, they turn out soggy and not crispy. They turn out perfect in this. And also, every now and then, I'll cook uh, some burgers on this with uh, this um, grilling attachment, which just, just raises it up a little bit off the ground, but I kind of like that. It's really good at heating, reheating uh, frozen foods that you get at the store. So let's see. These I'll just rinse and throw on the dishwasher. Rinse, 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 rinse. Dishwasher in the bowl. Ka-ching. ka -sling. You know what? I'm thinking I might want to get a start on these uh, mashed, this mashed potato icing here. Oh, I gotta clear this up because I'm gonna use it for later. And I'm gonna dry this by hand because this is going to be an improvised uh, turntable for icing the cake. Aha. Put 
that there. Put the salt away. Put the thyme away. <laughs> There's a Back to the Future reference there, possibly. A joke to be made. Putting thyme away. I don't know. Uh, that little. So, what else am I going to get? Oh, another ingredient. Now the recipe for my instant mashed taters calls for two cups of water, but I'm gonna give it a little bit more. F Actually, whew. hmm, I had an idea come to mind. I was gonna use this better than bouillon stuff to make a chicken broth to make it taste better, but since we're using a meat cake, should I use beef broth instead? Again, a question I will leave to you. Regular water, chicken broth, beef broth. I've got other flavors in there. I've got. I think I've got. What's it, uh, garlic, I've got a vegetable broth as well, so what do you want? What do you think? Chicken prey in the air fryer, that is awesome indeed. If you need anything, I microwave, I end up browning it in the oven. That's, but that's, I think this is sort of like a, I won't say this is the perfect combination of, it's a perfect uh, tabletop thing. It's all, because all this is is a glorified um, convection oven, just there's a burner right above the basket, and then there's a blower that just circulates the air around it. But for tabletop, I think I think it's I think it's great. I mean, a lot of I'm sure a lot of hardcore chefs would probably eschew this, but I like it. That's me. Bomb the Raptor says chicken broth. Yeah, that, that I think that's probably good. That's probably the best. I think. Unless anyone disagrees, I think chicken broth would be the best to mix with the mashed potatoes. I'll have a swig of beer. Get the sprinkles on standby. But let me get the tabletop view in the gear. There we go. Don't need the foil anymore, I don't think. So anyway, let's get some water in here. Two cups of water going in here. Is that close enough? Teaspoon measure. Get that out here. Don't, I don't think I need the that recipe anymore. So I'll get that away and get the chat on full screen. <laughs> Wait, beef broth on a beef cake is like chocolate cake with chocolate icing. Judy says no no chicken broth for my meat cake. Well, I just wanted something that had a little bit more flavor other than just plain old mashed potatoes, so... Let me think. I've got, again, i got other flavors. But then again, then again, at the same time, it's not really gonna lend too much flavor to the, let me think. Hmm. I also do have say, uh, some garlic stuff here to make like a garlic uh, mashed potatoes if you wanted to, but then again, hold on, wait a minute. This already is roasted garlic, so it's already has some garlic flavor to it, so, uh, hmm. Let me think. Christopher says, I don't have an air fryer either. Well, butter for the potato frosting. I don't, well, again, this is the instant stuff, so I don't know if it's already got butter flavor in it or not. But you know what? I'm wasting time here, so while I'm thinking about it, I'll just heat this up. I spilled some on my foot. It's such a rush and thinking, well, you know what? Still two cups. I'm going with it. Going with it. Got a bunch of crap in front of the microwave. So four minutes to come to a consensus on the flavor of the uh, icing. You got chicken, beef, 
there's garlic or just plain. Of course, plain is garlic, but oh, let's just show you what I'm dealing with here. If you can't tell, I'm a fan of this better than Boolean stuff. Oh, wait, what the heck? The crap? Ah, this stupid ketchup, keeping it stupid. Refrigerator open. Ah. Butter for the potato frosting. Devil's food cake with milk chocolate frosting is yummy. So anyway, this is again that my beef uh, better than bullion stuff. I showed you earlier the chicken flavor. What is this? Uh, oh no, no, I was wrong. This is the beef base. What I showed you was the vegetable base, and I think that's wholly inappropriate for a meat cake. So I'm gonna reject this one immediately. And roasted garlic. Mm -hmm. Garlic well, when I say garlic on a potato frosting, I'm, I'm talking about what I'm gonna flavor that potato frosting with. I'm not gonna use just I don't want to use just water because I think chicken adds a little bit chicken broth adds a little bit more flavor to it. Um, basically, again, what I'm talking about is. These instant mashed potatoes require two cups of water, but I think that's kind of bland, so I wanted to add some chicken broth to it to jazz its flavor up. But of course, there's also beef broth I can make and also garlic broth I can make. So Bob says chicken or garlic. Bob says chicken or garlic. I'm leaning towards chicken, just to have a nice little contrast with the meat, plus it's not going to lend too much flavor. The uh, beef is still going to be the star of the show, no matter what. Just a nice little accent to it. But not you think maybe adding some butter to it might help it as well. So I'm going to get some anyway. A little bit here. Let it soften for a tea and tad bit. They put garlic on everything. I say no garlic. So unless, oh, wait, 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 six minutes left on the uh, cake, so let me go do a temperature reading first. Oh, take a look at this. Look at that. It's shrunk quite a bit. It looks like a strange kind of cakey thing, but let's get the turntable cutting board out of the way. Get a temperature reading. I think it's kind of black on the top because I squirted some olive oil on it. But wait a minute. 107 degrees. We may have to. 107 degrees. Oh, 117. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I just got the wrong bit there. 126, 124, 123. Get another bit here. 28, 37, 40. This is a irregular kind of thing here. 47, 45, 44. Back here, 37. I'm not getting consistent temperatures here, so I'm thinking this may have to go in there for maybe definitely at least five more minutes. So this is going to be a little bit longer. So anyway, peas, well, even if I did have peas, I wouldn't do that. This is a carnivore cake. And the bacon bits are going to be my sprinkles, so. Blech. So anyway, well, I've let the food all to the side, but you know what? I'm going to make an executive decision. It's going to be chicken. I think it'll be a nice contrast of flavors. It's also a carnivore cake, and you gotta have a little bit of variety. So anyway, where's my measure? Where is my... I, I had it just a second ago. Right here. Beer for good measure. Beer for good luck. Beer for good um, goodness. Sake. Uh, 
Better watch out. Better not cry. Better not pat. I'm telling you why. Because I said so. Credit to Brack from that 90s cartoon. No, not Brack. Uh, what was his name? Um, Zorak on uh, the Brack show. Oh, what was that cartoon called? Space Goes Coast to Coast. That was a good one. directions here. It says bring this to a boil. This is almost out of boil, so we might be ready to go right away. My only worry again is burning my hands in this abomination. So that's one teaspoon there. Well, this isn't going to be a very, very strong chicken flavor. It's just going to be a broth, so... The potatoes are still going to be the dominant flavor, so. I'm not overly concerned about it, but then again, I can kind of wing it just going as I go. And if it tastes like uh, something disgusting, you can blame me for it. Because I'm the one that's got to eat this thing. Stir this up, stir it 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 up. Stir it up. That's it. Broth goes in. There's still a little bit of junk there, but you know what? That's okay. What's next? So, gotta get this crap ready. This is gonna burn my hands so bad. Well, I've got gloves. I've got oven mitts and it'll help so and get a little bit of butter in this as well for fun and entertainment and profit well no profit because I'm not monetizing this I can't wait I'm rambling I blame the uh, bourbon barrel ale from Boulevard so there's some butter in there. So this is on the small pot. I'll crank the small area to really high heat. Don't need the butter anymore, so I'm going to put that away. Let's just see. Yeah, no new chat to me. Let's put my better than bullion away. Again, I've said before, I'm a big fan of Better Than Boolean. It's a lot cheaper per jar of this stuff than actually getting regular um, beef broth or chicken broth or whatever broth in the um, quart containers at the store. And yes, this is more expensive than the um, cubed um, bullion or powdered bullion that you get, but it's of a much, much higher quality. So I can't recommend this stuff enough. And no, I'm not sponsored by them, but this stuff is good. Oh my goodness, let me see. Fork. <laughs> Did I see it right? So you saw a meme with a chicken picking a chicken said, Y'all eat chicken 364 a year and you never give thanks. That was turkey day. Well, if it makes that chicken feel better, I had chicken wings on Thanksgiving this weekend, so the chicken gets its praise from me at least. To that day at least. So anyway. This stupid thing says into a boil. It shouldn't take much longer. Whilst I'm waiting. Nah. 
Mr. Hand, did you know KFC mixes chicken grease in their gravy mix? Hmm. I did not know that, but I like that. Well, they never, well, then again, they never really said what kind of gravy it is anyway. I mean, there's multiple kinds of gravy. It can be like beef gravy, but beef gravy, <laughs> gravy, beef gravy, chicken gravy, turkey gravy. There's more multiple kinds of gravy out there. All this is just grease thickened up or maybe in a broth or whatever. And there's the beeper. So let's see what we have on our meat cake temperature. We're shooting for 160 degrees at least, just so it's properly done. But look, look at that. Now it's brown on the top because of the olive oil, but I'm not worried. We're black on top because of olive oil, but. Poke in there. 141, 49, 54, 57, 58, 60. Uh huh. We're getting there, there. Oh, that's a solid crust there. Oh, 162, 63, 65. Oh, that's done. Done there. Another corner. Done, I think. Yeah, that's done. Get in the center. Nope, oh, yep, that's done. So the cake is done, but I'm going to let it sit for... I mean, I remember the recipe said to let it rest for about 10 minutes, so I'm going to do that right now. I'm just going to let it sit on the other side here. And since it shrunk so much, I didn't really need the um, foil wrapping around it. But you know what? Eh, it's probably good to have it anyway. So I'm going to turn that off. Get some paper towels to wipe by my brow. Chat says, oh, yep, Bob loves it, I guess. He's the comment. This is. Bob says, actually, it would be awesome if wing places like BW3 had turkey wings, too. I'm not so sure about that because turkey wings are um, white meat, if I'm not mistaken. And that's where chicken wings are have a little bit more fatness, so it's a little bit more easier to eat. I find that white turkey meat is, again, just much drier, much more bland and dull and boring. And, again, it's just dry. I don't like it. But that's just me. Oh my god, that just looks like a, it's going to be a small cake, but it's going to be full of so much awesome stuff. You know what? But now we're going to run into an issue with time, because that's going to cool off, but this is going to get hot. Now I'm wondering if it's too hot for me to handle with this stuff here. But at the same time, just... I can do like the um, outer layer of frosting and such without, while it's hot, with using like a spatula or something. Not like that. Like this chipped up and broken thing my Bob I got. Let's get that there, ready to go. Well, so I get these. Instant mashed potato icing ready to go. So let's tear a notch for easy opening. Where's the notch? Where's the easy opening? I think you're a liar. Screw it. Get my paring knife here. Oh my god, that smell. Ooh. I smell stuff that smells like, I know it's instant mashed potatoes, but still it tastes fine, pretty good. And I'm seeing a small boil, so you know what, that's enough for me. Turn the heat off, put it out of the way, dump that in there. Take it off the heat, and Stir and fluff up our um, hot chicken.
chicken broth flavored icing. about maybe five minutes since I took that out so I got set my timer for five minutes while I let both that cool a tiny bit and that rest a little bit more. Is there anything else I need to clean? I don't think so yet. I gotta throw this crap away. This didn't touch anything gross so this goes back. This goes in the garbage. Uncle Chuckles has got to go. Nice to see Uncle Chuckles. Thanks for coming by. There's Uncle Ham. Is, Mr. Ham is still here. Judy says, when turkey is carved, the only time I can... When the turkey is... Bleh, I can't even speak English now. It's like when I try to speak 20, 25 different words, I can only get 12 out at a time, and then it causes a... vernacular... Cons it's happening again. Anyways, let's see. Okay, it's official. Bob gone, done, went to bed. So Joe the Raptor is back here. So, all right, Joe. You know, I figured he would be the one that watched Brian Ohm eat the cake. Well, Judy, I guess you don't really know Joe that well. Because he's the ultra carnivore of the two. So, and this is sort of his idea as well. So, but you know what? Let's just. Hey, hey, hi, oh, hi, oh. I think it's a nice consistency. You know what? While I'm waiting for this to quote unquote rest, I'm gonna just try and get this onto the decorating plate. Let's see here. How am I gonna do this? Well, actually, why is this whole thing here? I don't need it all there. I just need this cake pan. I'll shove that back in there. Put that off screen because I don't need it anymore. I don't want to swig a beer. And I got a couple knives here, so now. What's going to make this a little bit more tricky is because, let's see, oh, 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 oh. there is some drippings at the bottom. Let's see. How am I going to... It really shouldn't be a problem, but anyway, let's... Which bit's too hot? This close. Judy will at least throw some parsley flakes on there, frosting to decorate. Again, I'm not using parsley flakes, I'm using bacon bits because this is a meat cake. Plus, also, another thing, I will decorate it with some uh, some ketchup as well as like, because you know, you see on some cakes they have like little chocolate little ribbons across from side to side, so maybe some ketchup ribbons will give it some nice color. Is that a good idea? I want this. Won't be raw enough that I will. Anyway, let's get this cake onto the decorating table. Bakery mammals only make what they want to make, and so do I. Ah, oh, yeah, ah. oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Ah! Oh, did I? Oh, I didn't burn the. Because remember, this side is hot because I cooked the mashed taters on it. And then I think in hindsight, it was poor decision for me to cook stuff here because this is going to be hot now. And I have to avoid this side like the plague. It just dawned on me, given the time of day, the time of the year, time of the living we're in right now, is a stupid statement to make. Because no one will avoid stuff like the plague because, well, look how we are now. But anyway, let me get a little taste of... 
Hot. Ooh, but tasty. Mmm, tasty. Got a little bit of crumb on the side there. Oh my god, it's a moist crumb. Mmm-hmm. This is good. This is really, really, really good. Ketchup is awesome. You can write in ketchup. Ooh! That's a good idea. So now... Let's get started with the basic stuff. I'm going to open this off camera. I'm not off camera, but that timer means the this meatloaf has rested. Now let's open up the cake decorating stuff. Again, I've never opened this before, so I'm going to be flying blind here. I might, for all I know, I might not even use this. This I don't think I will use. This I might use to get a nice even edge around the side. But again, this is kind of stubbly, so I don't know how that would work. Yeah, this would be good for these little scissory kind of things. It might be good for some um, designs, but I don't think anything would be appropriate for this. Hmm. I'll just use this to make it smooth. Put that somewhere. And now the flowery. Oh. I bet whoever designed this never thought this would be used for with mashed potatoes. Okay, now. now how does this work? I think I need to shove this. Do I, need to, do I show this bit in here or no? I don't think so. Actually, maybe it is. Let's find a good flowery kind of a tip for this. It's only going to be for like a small, tiny little accent on it, so... No. I hear something in the background. I can open that. Uh, which one will be the best? I know you can't really see what I'm going to use here. Something that probably has a lot of flow to it. Yep, uh, this is probably it. I'm thinking this little bit of it's focusing in. It's not focusing in. So let's do it on this. Can you see this at all? It's as flowery as it's going to get. So this is, you see, the world, Joe says the world needs more raptor in it. Eh, well, you might not be given if all raptors were like you, Joe. Well, I think, I think it needs a little bit of both Bob and Joe. So, because you need one to eh, cancel the other out. Just different ways of thinking about the world. If that makes sense, then, yeah, it does. But anyway, beer first. Mashed potatoes on the top. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. But whoever designed these cake icing things never had this in mind. Never, ever, ever, ever. Um, 
now here comes the moment of truth where we see whether this stuff will actually function as an icing. And I hope I have some left for the flat rate bits. It just might be on the top though. I was thinking maybe some on the side, but I don't know if I'm gonna have enough taters left, but let's just see what happens. Yeah, I think I'm spreading it a little too thin. Or maybe not. It might be maybe a little bit too much on the top, so that might be it. Switch some of it to the side here. Oh my goodness, this is... <laughs> oh my god, I can... what the... What am I... what am I doing? <laughs> I'm making a cake out of meatloaf and mashed potatoes. If you remember the show Mythbusters, I just had one of those what the hell am I doing moments. Oh goodness. Oh my god, this... I don't know, this looks... holy crap. This looks better than I thought it ever would. I think, maybe just me, but I think this mashed potato is a little bit more, feels a little bit more workable, a little bit more malleable. You know, malleable might not be the right word. It feels a little more workable than normal cake icing. It's not, it's actually not a perfect on the side, but then again, I'm not really sure it needs to be. And I'm probably even doing the technique wrong on this, but at this point, I really don't care. Oh my gosh. Meat should be meat and plants should just be plants. Oh my goodness. You're going to talk to another discussion again. Uh, if y'all got plant-based meat, pray. Is the potatoes melting? They're not really melt. It feels kind of. I feel like they're getting a little bit more solid as they're getting cool. But I think that's cool too. So let me fill in some of the holes here a little bit. I don't know if this is how real cake decorators do this stuff. But this is, oh my goodness, I feel like I'm on the verge of something spectacular. Let's see this here, oh my god. Oh man. This will be the last anal bit that I do on this cake here. I've only got a limited amount of time here. Not really, I don't really have a limited amount of time, but there's only so much time I care to spend on this, but you know what? Take, let me just do a little bit more flattening of this. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell is this? Just look at this. Look at it from the top first. Yeah, I know it doesn't really look like a cake, but <laughs> I'm getting into a laughing fit right now. But now, on the other side, look at it from the side. Look at, look at this. This is a cake made out of meat and mashed potato. <laughs> I, mean, I, know, I, I know I could probably spend more time along the sides to make it look more perfect, but... 
Let's all right. You know what? Let's add the fun, let's up the funny factor now. Let's do some really funny stuff. This looks good from the top. Put some more taters on it. So I don't think I got enough taters to put some little flowery bits on the side. And again, I have no clue what I'm doing here. So let's see. I'll put the fork away for. Actually, I'll just leave it there. I want to get a spoon to spoon some more icing into this. <laughs> icing bag? You, bet you thought you were going to get some sugary greatness of icing in you? Nope, not in this channel. The designers of this cake, icing bag, and tips didn't know what they were in for when they were purchased by me. Oh my god. Now, I don't know if this is going to work, but this is all I got. I got one shot of this. Oh my god, this is kind of hot, but it's not as hot as I thought it was going to be. You know what? <sighs> oh, not in another minute, but let's try this. And is this still hot? It's still a little hot, but you know what? It's not bad that it'll melt it, so. You guys got a good view of this? You know what? <sighs> Liquid Courage. You know what? I'm going to finish this in the name of Liquid Courage. Actually, no, it won't. Finish that for victory. So here we go. I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. That's not gonna work. Let's just. Oh, good grief. Holy crap, it's working. I am piping a rosy. funky kind of thing on a with mashed potatoes on a meatloaf you know what, I got enough let's put some on the bottom here Now, again, I'm a rank amateur of the worst degree when it comes to decorating cakes, but I've actually never even decorated a cake other than this thing, and even I'm proud of this. There we go. Oh, that's as good as it's going to get. And now, of course, let's see. Uh, let me see. Oh my God! I'm gonna take a picture of that. Put that on Facebook. Should do that. <laughs> I should do that for Christmas and just buy dessert cake. <laughs> oh my God! How is? You know what? I'm taking a. You are. You're right, Joe. I am taking a picture of this. Let me. Let me clear this. Side up. But wait a minute, you know what? Actually, you know what? I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. Well, let me see here. There's a couple things left I need to put on some bacon bits for sprinkles and some ketchup. I'm gonna put some, uh, let's see, I'll put some like fancy pants. Ah! Not done yet, not done yet. We just won't show that side on the camera. No. 
serves me right for trying to open it up upside down. But I'm still not done. I gotta put down the sprinkles and the um, ribbons of ketchup. I think I'm gonna do that a different way. Squeezy bottle. A little bit of ketchup in here, so it needs a little bit more fine control. That's enough, I think, for now. Just side my pants. So now. cake with this but oh well it's only my first time so there we go it could be better but it could be worse It's looking exquisite. And now, a little bit of sprinkles on top and bacon bits. Holy Jesus. I, what have I created here? <clears throat> All right, bacon bits and sprinkles. center. And there you go. This has exceeded my expectations. Look at, you know what? Joe, when your hashtag, if, if it's safe for me to come over sometime when your hashtag comes, Maybe we gotta do one of these. Oh, good God. I am. Um, yeah, there's a little. No, that's just that's ketchup. But this is. This is beyond anything I'd ever imagined. Look at it from the top. Oh. Again, I am, it took a little bit more work than I thought, but the result was absolutely worth it, at least visually. You know what? Ah! Mixing bowl falling over. But I don't care because the cake turned out so well. Bit. Now, you know what? That's a perfect thumbnail. I'm going to give me a thumbnail image for that, like, right now. Let's see what the best angle of this would be. Let's get some stuff out of the way here so I can get a perfect, perfect shot of this. Next October 21st, we should be done with the mammal. Hopefully, well, 
Bob, Joe, I will get you some pics as soon as we're done with the stream. I'll put some on my Instagram. All over my social media. You'll get a pic too. Let's, let's make it as photogenic as possible. Let's clean this surface up. Just eensy, teensy, weensy a little bit. Can we get a cross section? Oh, we will. We definitely will. Give us a tiny little bit here. We might want to get a cross section of the cake anyway. So anyway, cell phone in hand. Make sure it's 16 by 9. 16 by 9, okay. Oh, no, 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 stop that, stop that backwards. I still had the... I'm an idiot and forgot to change the time thing, whatever. I was using this for something else, for timed photos, and well... All right, off. There we go. That's enough of that. Now for the cross section. Let's get a plate for this. Do I have a fork there? I do now. So here we go. So here we go. Time to cut the cake. cake so this is hard to cut. Aha! Let's see. I'll do a quarter. I don't care. Now let's see if I can do this properly. Cut this properly. Hopefully. Aha. Uh -huh. There we go. Oh. Well. <clears throat> this slice might not be the best. But oh wait, if you want the cross section on the inside, let's take a look at this. This don't look too bad. It's a little uneven, but again, that's what you'd expect with a meatloaf cooked like this. As far as that look goes, I think it's fine. Now, but then again, everybody kind of screws up when they cook, cut up a cake that does stuff like this every now and then, but anyway. As far as the actual slice of cake, yeah, it's it's meat cake. And so now, it's happy late hatch day to me. Yep, happy ha happy late hatch day to you, Joe. This is in your honor. Let's try some of the icing with chicken broth in it first. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Go with the chicken broth was the right move. Either that or it sucked in some of the um, meatloaf flavor into it as well. You know what? For fun, I'm going to add a little bit more bacon sprinkles to this. And now, this is going to be harder. You know what? I think I may need a steak knife to cut into this. Ah. 
because remember this is meatloaf. So anyway, happy hatch day Joe. This is for you. I might have about this is I think this would be even better baked instead of air fried but I only chose air fried because I didn't want to wait an hour for this to bake holy fuck I'm gonna swear this one holy fuck and need some more ketchup syrup Oh my god. Oh, I got a little bit of, a little bit of the cayenne. Let's get a little bit with the uh, frosting. The chicken mashed potato icing. Mmm. 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 Oh my god. Joe, I wish you were here to try this. This is great stuff. I won't. I don't. I'm not sure to say that this is the greatest thing I've ever made, but it's pretty darn close. Wow. And I'm glad y'all were here to see this. This is this is really really good stuff. So let's see here. Mr. Hamlet's good. You want a piece? So everybody. Well, so Mr. Hamill, you want this for your hash day cake? Oh, yep, yep. Well, you've seen it. You know how it's made. But again, the only change I would make to this cake is, like I said, I'd probably bake it in the oven. I think it tastes a little kind of tough, if you will. I think that's because I cooked it in the air fryer. And so it's a little bit harder to cut and a little bit and such. But if it was in the oven, I think it would be 11 times better. Or maybe, maybe a little bit softer. But still, it is fantastic. It is great. This is this is dinner, and I'm going to enjoy it. Speaking of enjoying stuff, ah, wow! I did not expect this to turn out as well as it did, and I think I'm going to end this on a high note. Actually, let me think. Should I end this video with my usual uh, chug or not? I've got some, again, the, what was it, the uh, Pineapple Saturday and the Miller Lite. Should I end with that chug or end on this high note? What do you want? Let's see, yes you want, oh my god. Man, I got pictures of it too, so this is going on social media, this is going to go everywhere. I can't get the smile for you, I gotta have another bite before. This is everything you could want. One more piece. Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can get enough of that. So I'm going to end on the high note. This stuff is fantastic. That's how the stream is going to end. So, thank you for tuning into this issue of um, Brino's World Live here on the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your feedback and all this. Mm -hmm. Try with steak sauce. Sadly, I don't have any steak sauce. I almost never use it anymore. But um, that might not be a bad idea for something like this. If I make this again, I'll consider the steak But then again, ketchup is a staple with meatloaf, so I figured it would go perfectly with this, so that's that. So anyway, thank you for watching here on Browns World. If you got any other ideas for anything I can cook live on a video or anywhere else, 
leave a comment down below. Otherwise, don't forget to like and share this video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and click the bell icon to be first to be notified of future videos. Hopefully as good, if not better than these. Well, I think I'll be hard pressed to do that. Once again, thanks for watching. Have yourself, oh wait, 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 wait. what the heck is, oh, that's just something on my lap. That's just a plastic thing on my laptop, anyway. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have yourself a good one. And stream, goodbye.